morning. It is Thursday, the 7th of April, 2022. Welcome to the Morning Watch. We were together not that long ago, about 11 hours ago, to do Proverbs chapter 3. And so today we're going to be in chapter 4. And tomorrow we will wrap up our week in Proverbs chapter 5. So good to see everybody. Let us know as you come in. Hi, Connie, LaDonna, there's my mom, there's my sister, Glenna. Let us know as you come in, as we've already said, welcome to the Morning Watch. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter 4 today. Great chapter, just such good stuff in Proverbs. There's Wilma, alright, if you got any prayer requests, please put those in the chat. There's Tina, there's Donna, good to see you all too. Let's pray, and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this morning. We just thank you for this time in God's Word, this special, special time that we can learn about you, that we can draw closer to you, learn about you, understand you, your character, your attributes, who you are, and Lord, who we are in you. Um, the things that we need to do, the things that we can do to draw closer to you and understand you more. We're just thankful for your Word thankful for your cross ultimately that you sent your son Jesus to give his life on the cross for us what an example Lord of sacrifice and love the ultimate demonstration of love Lord let us understand today the things that you would have us to understand we love you and we ask all this in the name of Jesus amen all right all right there's Diane and Virgil good to see everybody all right so Proverbs 4 again Proverbs written by King Solomon one of the wisest men that have, has ever lived, and uh, the son of King David. And so you're going to hear here in Proverbs 4, the heart of a father. A heart of a father teaching his son, teaching his children about the truth, the wisdom, the wisdom of God. And so you're going to hear that as we go. All right, so let's jump in and get started. He says, Hear, O sons, the instruction of a father, and give attention to that you may gain understanding for I give you sound teaching he's telling his children listen to me listen to what I'm telling you he says give your attention you know there's a lot of things in this world that demand our attention or we think they do right and so our minds are everywhere all over the place busy 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 but what he's saying here is listen give attention to what I am telling you you hear the heart of a father he says do not abandon my instruction. Don't abandon it. Don't walk away from it. Okay? We're, we are prone to wander. But he says, keep your mind on what is true. Verse 3. Solomon's writing. He says, when I was a son to my father. Okay? He's talking about David directly here. He says, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother. Then he taught me and said to me, all right, this is the words of David to his son Solomon. He says, let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. There's life, is what David is telling Solomon. There is life in the truth. There is life. There is life. Uh, there's, there's a longer life. There is a more fruitful life, a more productive, joyful life. When we align ourselves with the ways of God. Okay, look at verse five. He says, acquire wisdom, acquire understanding. What does that mean? Acquire, get, gather. It requires action on our part. One, a person doesn't just simply, oh, I've become wise. No, you have to pursue it. You have to, as Solomon's writing here, acquire it. It requires us to do something and take action. All right, getting in the Word of God. All right, here in about a month, the morning watch will go away. And so, one of my big burdens is helping me. Okay, I'm selfish, helping me and helping those of you who have been so faithful keep this going. Because a habit is anything that you do for 60 days or so. There's a lot of neural research around this. If you keep something going for 60 days, it becomes a habit to you. Good and bad. Okay? And so, that we will keep this moving. So, acquire wisdom. Look at this. Do not forget 
nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. Who's her? Wisdom. Remember, this whole uh, metaphor of wisdom being a woman is carrying through here. Don't forsake her and she will guard you. Wisdom will guard you. He says, love her and she will watch over you. Isn't that nice? Isn't that encouraging this morning, knowing that if we love wisdom, she will watch over us? Verse 7, the beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom and with all of your acquiring, get understanding. What a good formula, right? He says, acquire wisdom and as you're doing that, you are going to acquire understanding. Well, what are we trying to understand? Life. Life. All the things that come at us. We're short-term residents here on this planet. Ultimately, eventually, if you know Christ, you'll be called to be in his presence when your life here is over. And so while we're here, we need to be about the business of acquiring understanding. Verse 8. I'm going slow this morning. Prize her and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a garland of grace. She will present you with a crown of beauty. All of these things come from pursuing a life that is defined by godly wisdom. How do we get wisdom? One of the greatest ways is to get into and dig out the treasures that are in Scripture. Okay, there's other ways too, right? Spending time with God in prayer, spending time with brothers and sisters in Christ, serving Him. A lot of other things, lots of other beautiful things. But the word of God needs to be our go-to. Here in verse 10, hear my son and accept my sayings and the years of your life will be many. He says, I've directed you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in upright paths. When you walk, your steps will not be impeded. What's that mean, impeded? That means it won't be blocked. You won't be blocked in the things that you try to do when you are looking at that situation through the lens of what God wants you to do. Okay? If you run, you won't be stumbled. You won't stumble. Okay? Verse 13. Take hold of instruction. All of these super, super active words. Passive, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, we're we're not gonna get wisdom passively. It's not going to just fall off out of the sky and into our minds and into our souls. It requires action on our part. Okay? He says, <clears throat> Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not proceed in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Avoid it. Do not pass by it. Turn away from it and pass on. Okay? What does this remind me of? This reminds me of that scripture that says, flee from all appearances of evil. If something looks like it's going to take you in a direction that is not of the Lord, run. Run from it. Okay? I mean, literally, hightail it. Get out of there. And the Bible says, from all appearances. If it even looks like it could be something that could be hurtful to you. Get away from it, okay? That's important to remember because it, it's like wisdom will help you determine wisdom through the power of the Holy Spirit living within you. Wisdom will help you know, hey, this is the path I'm supposed to take because that's the way of the Lord. That's his path for me, okay? And that comes through, remember, acquiring, seeking out, digging out these treasures. All right, so let's move on. He says, Verse 16, for they cannot sleep unless they do evil. Talking about the people who don't do this, okay? And he says, and they are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous, but the path of the righteous, and if you know Christ, that's the path that you are on. Sanctification, becoming more like Jesus every day. Little by little. It's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, okay? And he says, watch this, this is incredible. Verse 18, but the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. The light of dawn. Right behind me you can see, you see a house across the street there. But what do you see in the sky? You see the sun coming up. 
the path of the righteousness. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. Look at it says, this shines brighter and brighter until the full day. I love it. We're literally seeing the sun rise behind me. It gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Our life, as we seek after the wisdom of God, our light. What does Jesus tell us to be? Salt and what? Light. Light. This world is dark. And the light that you and I have, it isn't our light. It's the light of Christ that we are shining for the world to see. Okay? To bring people to him. Go and make disciples. He says, the way of the wicked is like darkness. Yeah. They do not know over what they stumble. They don't even see it. They're blind to it. They don't see what they're stumbling over. When you and I came to know Christ, if you know him, and I'm beg of you if you do not know him come to him but if you if you are not in Christ you are in darkness the Bible says that when you and I came to know Christ we were brought from death to life we were brought from darkness to light it doesn't take a lot of light to dispel darkness if you've been in a really dark place before I mean really really dark you couldn't see the hand in front of your face a match just one lit match will light up that place. What does all that mean? You and I and all of us together as the body of Christ are an amazing light that can show the world that there is only one path to true freedom, and that is the path of Christ, the path of the gospel, the path of the cross. Okay? It says the wicked, they don't even know what they're stumbling over because they're in darkness. Look at verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep it here. Okay? Keep it in your heart. I pray that as you're going through the day, after we finish the morning watch, that God's scripture, because you've been in it so much, just bubbles up. Just bubbles up. And you use it. For his glory and for his honor okay and he says for they are life to those these sayings this this truth their life to those who find them and health to all their body that's crazy what's solomon writing here literally wisdom will make you more full of life okay and he says here watch over your heart with all diligence that's a big one because we got to guard our hearts. Our hearts are very tender. And our hearts are also dark, right? And so in Christ, we have been reborn. But the but Solomon is writing here, watch over your heart with all diligence. Guard it. Guard your heart. Be careful about what you let in it. In your mind. In your heart. Okay? He says, for, this, is, this is huge. He says, watch over your heart with all diligence. For from it, Flow the springs of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. Okay, not lying. He says, and put devious speech far from you. Again, a verb of action. Put it away from you. Deceitful talk. Devious words. And he says, let your eyes look directly ahead on that path that God has set for you. And let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Look what it says. Verse 26. We've got two more verses. Watch the path of your feet and all of your ways will be established. That's the path that God has for you. And the last one. Verse 27. Don't turn to the right nor to the left. Turn your foot from evil. Okay? you got a path going this way. you got a path going this way. And those are not good paths for you. Keep your path on the straight and the narrow. Okay, narrow is the way that leads to Christ. Okay, all right, narrow is that gate. All right, all right, let's see who's joined us since we started. Kim, Rosemary, Kim, Virgil, Shirley, good to see all of you. I love you. I hope you have a great Thursday. And um, so thankful for all of you. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we will get our day started. Lord, thank you for all of your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that you would undergird us with your wisdom. I pray, Lord, that you would give us discernment. We pray, Lord, that you would let us acquire wisdom, acquire understanding, acquire discernment, 
that we would know from your word the path that you would have us to take, not turning to the right or to the left, but keeping our minds and our paths firmly fixed on you and what you have for us today. Today is the day of salvation. Or if there's one person who does not know you in this place, on YouTube or wherever people happen to watch it, I pray, Lord, that they would come to you that, that because, Lord, you are pursuing them. Um, we know, Lord, that we can't outrun you. And, Lord, we just give all of this to you. We love you, and we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Have a wonderful good day, y'all. And we will see you tomorrow for Proverbs chapter 5.